Thank you for tuning in to Uber Paws of Love. I want to do a short little demonstration in a good way to allow your dog time to process an environment using a long line if you have limited mobility or have an adolescent dog that is struggling with taking it all in and being too overstimulated in the environment. So I'm going to kind of walk you through a little bit of my setup that I have today and then show you my how Azul is processing the environment. Let's switch around if I can do that and look at Azul. Give me just a moment. So Azul's just chilling on his long line there. All right, so this is my setup. I have Azul, he's on a harness. The line I brought today is only a 20 foot line and I wanted to give it an extra little bit so he also has his 10 foot leash. So, here you go. So, the harness always clip to the back when you're using a long line. Azul, stop, hold still. There, see, clip to the back, safety, long line. I have a short leash, so if I need to stop him short, I can step on the knot right there. And then I have a longer 20 foot line, and he can sniff in this area. I could be trailing him on this line, but I'm not at the moment because I wanted this to kind of just be a more adolescent geared. Um, we do have some distractions off there in the distance with some people moving by cars. We have a nice trail right there. We have a road right here, but it's a slow road that only goes to the park. And he doesn't have access to it. So he's smelling rocks. So if you follow the line all the way back up, I have a huge carabiner. And it is clipped to my car. So this way I don't have to worry about him pulling me all over the place. And I can just sit here and let him interact with the environment as long as he chooses to do so. Now, Azul is fairly experienced in checking out an environment and determining, you know, what's been around. So he doesn't move around a whole heck of a lot. But if you have an adolescent dog and you're doing this for the first time, they're probably going to do some more weave back and forth and check things out a little bit more than Azul is doing. So I'm going to pause just a moment and get you in my tripod so I can show you what you do when your dog decides to come back and check in with you. So here you see a little bit more of the field that we are in. We are actually near a park and a ball field that's down over the hill. And we've got just kind of wide open space that is much bigger than the line that I have my dog on. And I have extra training supplies and whatnot in the back of my car, my treats, my toys, all my goodies. In case we're here a while, Azul has started exploring the environment a little bit more. Chose this place because A, I knew it was quiet, so very, very little outside distractions coming in, into the environment. But there are a lot of dogs that are walked here regularly and deer here on a daily basis and all kinds of other wildlife that we've seen in this area. So I know the grass itself is loaded with smells. And so we're just going to kind of wait Azul out and eventually he's going to decide to come back and see what I'm doing. He's sniffing, he does a look, he checks, what's up mom, what are we doing? And normally if he were more adolescent style, I would wait another moment to let him explore and sniff. But since he's a Zool, I'm going to get him playing in again. Hey puppies, hey puppies, hey puppies, yes, the boy, get it, get it, hunt it, yes, yes, get it. Get it, get it. Oh, this one smells good. I play with other dogs with this one, don't I? Yes. Back. Oh, 
Oh, are you ready? Can you get it? So he doesn't want to play with toys. Let's see if he wants some treats. You want to do some work? Some work work? And nope, he's pretty much saying the environment's more fun than me at the moment. So I'm going to let him have that time. Let him enjoy his environment. And when he wants to come to a nose, I bet you. But again, this is kind of his time. So however long it takes, it might take him 10 minutes, it might take him 15, 20, who knows. But eventually he's going to decide he wants to come check back in with me. And so we're just going to wait him out. The more fun I am in the environment, the more likely he is to come to me. Yes. Good boy. Yeah, he doesn't want my treats either. Which is typical of his rule. I have a peanut butter. You want the peanut butter? And so, this is called my go nowhere walk. So I really don't want to go anywhere, but I want my dog to take everything in and see we had a car coming through, caught his little attention, he wants to watch it. That's part of processing the environment. We want him to just watch and see what is most fun to him. He determines the car's not coming our way, he'll go back to his sniffing or come back to play with me, one or the other. So if you think about it, we walk our dogs mainly to help tire them out so that they can behave in the house. Um, it's good exercise for them, it's good exercise for us, whatnot. There's a lot of other reasons we walk our dog. We use it for training and whatnot as well. But adolescent dogs really, really struggle with wanting to pull on the leash simply because the environment is too over exciting. So by giving Azul this time to just acclimate to the environment, he can then not drag me down the trail when we actually do start out on our walk. Because we're going to walk this walking trail here in just a little bit. But I want him to relax and settle and all the excitement that a dog may have built up for going for the car ride and see he's pretty chill and calm that's what our focus is so for azul this whole thing was probably five six minutes because he's done this a bunch of times and he's used to me talking on the phone or doing a zoom or whatever like this but if your dog is not used to this and doesn't really know how to explore the environment yet this is the perfect way to try to give them that opportunity, that freedom to be able to do it in a safe, controlled manner that's going to keep both you and your dog safe. So get outside, have some fun with your dog, and let them be a dog a little bit before you go for your walk. <coughs> All right. So as those chill, we're kind of ready to go for a walk. But before we do that, before we head out on the trail, wait, Zoli, wait. We're going to explore this area of the field just a little bit more on his long line. Give him a little bit more room to roam now. And this way you can see what it looks like when a dog is really exploring the environment and kind of having their alone time. If he pulls that line tight, I'm going to stop. And he's going to wait. He knows this. We're not moving until he's relaxed it. He really wants to get to this bush over here. He loves the longer, taller grass. Pulls it tight. I'm going to stop. That means he's getting overexcited in the environment. He's got a good smell. I'm going to brace it. So the way I have it set up now, his long line is actually on his shoulder strap instead of in my hands. Easy, easy does it. You can get there. Think, nope, easy. Back up. Thank you. Good job. He 
And here he gets to be a dog. He's still watching people down the trail a little bit. We'll see if he were on a short leash or on a retractable, he might try to pull towards those people. And now pretty much all he's going to do is smell and sniff and he might hit the end if I'm not following him. We hear a doggy barking in the distance. So if you have the ability to move with your dog, it definitely helps easy. Thank you. Well, that was a slow tree. Hey. You notice he got a little bit quicker. He got a little bit more wanting to pull because this is where the deer really are every single night down this little hill. And this is uh, Doggy Nose Wonderland. Nope, not that way. Nope, we're not going that way. We're gonna go this way. Very nice, good choice. Too hard. You can always tell when he's got a good smell because that's when the pull kicks in. So while he's got the freedom to move around the field and choose, I've got the defined, this is the field I want to use, this is my perimeter. He can go in the tall grass, I'm not going in the tall grass. And I'm just going to walk the edge of the field or follow him. If he decides to backtrack, we'll backtrack, but otherwise he's pretty used to this so he's just going to circle the field. Uh-uh, not that way. Thank you. Back, back. We're going this way. I know you're ready to go on the trail. Not yet. Nope, not yet. So there's a couple of other key safety factors if you're using a long line. For one, if this were in my hands, there's a little wood have pulled it out of my hands already, so it's on a shoulder strap wrapped around my body. Two, when you're using a long line, always have the proper footwear. I've got nice, good hiking tennis shoes on. Azul, you gotta fix it, bud. Come here, fix your leash. Yeah, so footwear is everything. I've learned that the hard way with a couple of accidents. So, don't be like me. I were a few of my friends that try to go out on a long line with your flip-flops and have messed up an ankle or knees or some other thing. Zoomers, you still got to fix it, dude. There you go. It's fixed. So we got a nice fence line here, another boundary. Keeps him from pulling me too far away. He might get too far ahead, but that's where we stop. He wants to go play on the ball field. So that's enough of our long line walk. This would continue typically about 30 minutes as well. And that, those two little things, 30 minutes outside of the car in a stationary field, and then 30 minutes Walking a short distance in a field like this where he can circle a couple of times, easy, is um, more mentally enriching and stimulating than walking three, four miles with your dog. So, especially with an adolescent, consider the value of a long line go nowhere walk versus a power walk, let's go walk two miles. It's... 
much easier for you to maintain and much easier for your dog and it's going to tire them out just as much. Have a great afternoon. Easy.